in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places. I am known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I want to thank you so much for joining me this uh, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you have decided to honor me with your presence upon this particular uh, video. It is an honor as always that you would give me a moment of your time so that I may be able to express an opinion that I feel that would be beneficial to us who have been made Deaf, dumb, and blind, lost in a land among strange people doing strange things, and we're going to speak about that as this conversation continues. Those of us who are the descendants of slaves born in America. Now, I would like to begin our talk by first saying the topic is sex. I'm going to attempt to talk about this subject so that it is not vulgar, it is not nasty. It is just an adult conversation about that which or that activity which brought us all into being. Without the act of sex, I would not be here speaking with you, nor would you be here to listen to these words. So, the act of sex itself is a wonderful and beautiful experience if we understand what they say in religion is the spiritual or mental side, a higher calling or understanding of the experience. Because the experience itself brings us temporary satisfaction. So since it brings us temporary satisfaction, that's why we're always looking for it. That's, all, that's why we're always thinking about it. Because once we get it and enjoy whatever pleasure we believe it is supposed to bring to us it goes away quickly so like a drug we're after our next fix and in that um, in that obsession with trying to find pleasure in the flesh and just like a drug addict we don't care who we hurt in order to get our next high the drug addict will rob their family members they will steal they will do whatever it takes to get the next fix and that is what you see when we become a sex addicted people 
when we are filled with sexual perversion, we even begin to seek out little children and babies to act our or try to get our high from. Babies and children that are not even mature enough to even know what you're doing to them. And then when these babies of whom you have destroyed grow up, they are gender confused. They are messed up in their head from an act of some demon trying to find pleasure in the flesh. This talk that we're having and since this is a open forum, we are in the public speaking or talking to one another. I am sure there are people of all races that wish to listen to what is going to be said. But this message is not for you. Especially the European Caucasian. And I say this because we who are the descendants of slaves born in America, we were forced into your society. And that society is alien to us. The behaviors that I'm going to speak about could be considered natural or it is acceptable behavior in your society. Greek culture, according to Caucasian scientists, they say that the, the behavior of what we call homosexual behavior originate up out of Greek culture. It is a Caucasian European phenomenon. You cannot and you will not see instances or find information whereas darker people were practicing homosexual, bisexual, all these sexual, sexual behaviors. This is a phenomenon that is only relevant to European Caucasian persons. Again, that originate up out of Greek culture. And you don't have to believe nothing I say. This is what I learned from them. So if you want to get angry, don't get angry at Brother Talik. You need to get angry at the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, and your media your scientists, your scholars who are teaching these things. But since we do not like to educate our minds, we spend very little time watching the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, and all these channels that try to educate our minds. We are busy watching the Housewives of New Jersey, the Housewives of Atlanta, you are interested in what Kim Kardashian is doing. You are watching Chef Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen, and anything of entertainment that does not feed the mind. Now, I will admit, I like watching Chef Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen. You can learn how to cook a little bit. But overall, the media is feeding the masses of the people foolishness so that you don't know anything so that you continue living in filth. And this behavior that I'm talking about can only be practiced by a people who have gone so low living in filth that this type of activity is acceptable. So homosexual behavior Origins from up out of Greek culture. And this is how I was listening to how they explain how um, homosexual activity began. And this is just part of it because 
It's a combination of things that have created the modern day gay and lesbian peoples. In Greek culture, in the beginning, it was an innocent thing for a male in order to show that he was of a certain high class. He would take on an apprentice or a helper, assistant, a young boy, take him in. This would show that I am a man of great wealth, a man of great stature in the community or in the society. But soon, these Caucasian males, the women were not involved at this particular time. It's always males that's doing some dirt. The males began to take their sexual perversions, their experimentations out on their assistants, their apprentices. Thus, I'm taking a boy as a friend. I'm taking a boy as a lover. Thus, you get the word boyfriend. At that time, there was no girlfriend. But later on, of course, when we begin to get equality, then you begin to have women that begin to molest children, boys and girls, and women would molest girls, then you would get girlfriend. And then, of course, when the Europeans began to conquer the African peoples or any dark people, they began to emulate and copy this perverted type of behaviors because they were raped and molested as children by their oppressors. And then, of course, even when we began to become free, then we continue that which these same behaviors that oppressed us. I can compare this behavior with incarceration. You have those who have been incarcerated, who have learned the style of the sagging pants. And then, once they come out on the street, they don't have to no longer do that. But this behavior is in them, and they take it out on the street. Being around incarcerated persons, expressing this behavior, then soon in society, it is, a, it is an acceptable type of thing. And you have these young men running around with sagging pants. Some of them do know that it comes out of prison behaviors and that it comes from up out of incarceration. But it is, it, is, it is now acceptable because in this society where homosexuality is acceptable and we know in prisons, most times when you see a male with sagging pants, that means he is available for anal penetration. That means he will bend over so that you can put your penis in his backside. That is what it is a sign of within the prison system. So here you are in the society and these young boys sagging their pants. And the reason why they can do that is because slowly but surely in the society, the male, both males, but the attack has been primarily on the black male to make you an infeminate, to give you woman-like characteristics to take the fire out of you, to take the warrior out of you, to take the soldier out of you, so that you will not stand for your people, so that you will not do that which will cause your people to evolve forward but in fact cause your people to go backwards in fact cause your people to go extinct because homosexual behavior does not produce life and there are those who don't want black folks to have life 
Would you be my boyfriend? My girlfriend? Why would you call a grown man a boy? Why would you call a grown woman a girl? Friend? The American black man, the descendants of slaves born in America, the African American, the Negro, the colored, y'all don't know what you want to call yourself. But we have been indoctrinated. We have been tricked. And we have been made to live an unnatural life that the African, in fact, to call ourselves African or black, that is unnatural. These things come up from up out of the white supremacist system. We have become Europeanized and we are proud to be black. When you say that, you are really saying, I'm still proud to be a slave. If you say I'm African American, you're still saying that I'm proud to be a slave. And when you look at the behaviors of the people, you see a people who in fact continue to behave and act like slaves. But this is about sex. This is about making love. There is only one. Listen to me. There is only one sex, brothers and sisters. The only real sex, and it's very simple, is the penis penetrating the vagina. That produces life. Sexual intercourse is the penis going into the vagina. That is the only real sex. Anything other than the penis going into the vagina is not sex. That is perversion. That is what they used to call being a freak. Now listen to me. See, what is a freak? If you see a dog, and I'm using a dog because y'all have the minds of white people. White people love dogs, and I'm pretty sure y'all love dogs too. You probably have your little puppy dog right next to you as you watch this video. But if we were looking at dogs, and you seen a dog with six legs, back in the day, they would call that a freak. That's a deformity. A freak of nature. So back in the day, when we was talking about doing certain things in the bedroom, and somebody would call you a freak, that means you was doing something that was abnormal. You was doing something that was freakish. You was doing something that was vile. You was doing something that was abnormal, deformed. I'm going to be a freak in the bed. So I'm going to do something unnatural, deformed, and we know this, and we do it with a smile because we live among a strange people, a deformed people, an unnatural people, and we have become unnatural. So I'm not going to knock you, I don't hate you, I don't dislike you, but I am here to tell us that we have adopted nasty, vile, freakish, abnormal, deformed behavior. If you wish to continue that, then you do it with the knowledge of what it is and you don't try to justify your filthy ways like it is normal. Well, brother, <laughs> I was taught in school that oral sex, anal sex, and all this other sex sex is sex. The Caucasian European white man or Americans, they always use science. They always use some type of so-called education, philosophy, to justify their nasty, vile behaviors or whatever they want to do. So you have Masters and Johnson. You have a little old white woman with Dr. Ruth. Ain't that woman, ain't she about 200 years old? She's going to tell people about sex. You 200 years old, what, what do you know about sex? But she's a sex expert. 
You have these other white people, Masters and Johnson, they're about 200 years old. They sex expert, experts. And you have Dr. Drew and Dr. Phil. All these people are sex experts. But because homosexual, see, let me tell y'all something. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this conversation. Um, I don't want it vulgar. But sucking the penis and licking the vagina. That comes from a, a, a European Western culture. That's homosexual behavior. Because since you're not going to put your penis in my vagina, what else you going to do? So I'm going to make up something. And see, homosexuality comes from uh, out of incarceration and the exploitation of women and children. When a man tells you to suck his dick, he's not telling you, oh, I'm, I want to love you. To tell a person, suck my dick. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Let me say, suck my penis. Suck my vagina. Let us be technical. I didn't. I'm, I apologize, I don't want to go that way. But when somebody tells you this, it is not meant to show love. It's meant to degrade, to show that I'm superior, to humiliate. Make mockery of you. When the demons molest and rape children, the children are not sexually mature, so the young boys can't get an erection. The little girls are not ready for no sexual intercourse. They make the little children suck the penis, lick their backside. The children can't do no better. This is where it's come from. Men do the same thing to grown women. Over generations and generations, men have abused females. Make the women suck their penis and lick their backsides. And all this, this is where, this is the origins of, this is the why. And incarceration. This is the why. Incarceration. You have men forced to live with other men. And you have women forced to live with other women. And they take their sexual frustration out on what is available. This is where homosexuality comes from. Some leave incarceration. And they return back to normal behaviors. But some, but some retain the behaviors that they... Uh, that, that was thrust upon them while incarcerated, just like the sagging pants. This is where homosexual, this is the origins and the birth of homosexual behavior. It comes from uh, out of Greek culture, combined with incarceration, combined with generations of children and women being exploited by men. It's always a man thing. Men cause this. At the root of it, men cause this. You can't find and you'll never find where it is a woman female thing because women produce life. Women are a respecter of life. But now, of course, many women, due to wanting equal rights, equal rights mean copying and see. Brothers and sisters in the black conscious movement, black power, black nationalism, black liberation, you don't want to be like your oppressor. Because you see what has happened to women trying to copy men. In fact, women have tried to copy men so much, now some of these women begin to look like men and act like men, walk like men, talk like men. Their voice have deepened. Some of them losing their shape. They looking more manly. Some of them are taking steroids and these hormones to do that on purpose. Because I'm already losing my womanhood. 
I already think I'm a man. Might as well go all the way. Freaks of nature. You deform unnatural people. And of course they use science to justify their freakishness. There is only one sex. And I'll tell you again. If it don't produce life, it's not sex. It's perverted behavior. In fact, it is called sodomy. Licking the vagina is sodomy. Putting the penis in your mouth is sodomy. And for y'all religious believers, many of y'all do this homosexual stuff. What do you think that your God was angry with in the time of Lot? Because the homosexuals was practicing this behavior that does not produce life and God is about giving you eternal life. So here you had a group or a mass of people that was doing counter God. How can you say that you love your woman? Uh. <laughs> Woo! How, brother, how can you say you love your woman and won't and you want to put your penis in her mouth where you urinate and do other nasty things? But I love you. I want my I want my sperm and my sweat all over your face. How filthy and nasty and vile. And you got the nerve, you have the nerve to say that you love this person. I want to give you my waste product. I want you to smell my butt where I take a dump every day. Oh, what kind of love is that? And you wonder why these relationships don't last because they are born and they are rooted in physical things. In fact, physical, physically filthy and vile and profane things. Disgusting. Oh, y'all are woo, y'all yucky. Make love to me. Make love to me. I don't want to have sex. Make love to me. Brothers and sisters, you are so far from off the path of what the sexual experience is supposed to teach us. Not just give you pleasure. Because see, in religion it talks about Jesus. And Jesus is here to bring eternal life. Sodomy don't bring life. But if you understood sex, it can bring you life. And if you understood the spiritual side of that activity, then it could bring us eternal life. But you don't understand what the fictional Jesus is talking about. Yeah, he's fictional. But you can learn a lesson from the Bible and the Quran and many other places. The racist Caucasian scientists and scholars and the know-it-alls, they would tell you that in nature you see signs of homosexuality. You don't see, there is no homosexual animal on this planet. Homosexual Behavior is an unnatural behavior. What you see animals do is that certain animals are allowed to mate. And then, just like incarceration, the males begin to bond with the males and the females with the females, and then they begin to act out their sexual frustration out on one another. But after the mating season is over, they go right back to doing what they was doing. Animals are not like human beings who have learned to try to seek some kind of pleasure in sexual perversion. What is pleasurable? Ah! What is pleasurable about putting your tongue in somebody's anus? Oh, what is, that shows how filthy and low down and nasty we have become. Following behind a perverted, unnatural people. And you love it. But see, 
That's on you. But I'm not going to stand around and listen to your filth and not tell you about your filth. You stink and you dirty and you nasty and you foul. And I'm, that's what I'm going to tell you. Whether you like it or not, you can't handle the truth. This is the real truth that has come to us to let us know that we have been deceived. You're living an unnatural life. Mm, mm, mm. The reason why we have come this far is because of corrupt men. And I'm going to say that again because of corrupt men. The man, the males have gone insane. And, and men cannot produce life. So since men can't produce life, they have no respect for life. But they want to have the honor and the position of woman. And so you're living in a world that has been born in it and it has been created by males who disrespect women. All your religions is anti-woman. Women can't do nothing of, of anything of any value. It's always about the man. The male if you look at what has happened to this planet while men are in charge, the only thing you see is constant warmongering, murder, killing, because these males cannot produce life and they don't have respect for life. They don't care nothing about destroying the earth because this earth is known as Mother Earth. They don't care nothing about nature because nature is considered mother nature. It's about the woman. It's about that which can produce life. And you have corrupt males that is in charge of this planet that cannot produce life. They can help bring life. But see, the life that they bring into being, they want to enslave it. So all over this planet, you see signs of enslavement. The males not the women. The males are behind enslavement. Then they enslave animals. They are about enslavement. That's because they have lost their way. They're trying to be the woman. But in order for you to be like the woman, you have to be able to produce life. And you can't do it, black man. You can't do it, white man. You can't do it, Chinese man. So... Their hatred for the woman. They try to force you. To submit to them. They try to control. The life. Because they can't produce it. Mm -hmm. Woo, these men. And you women. You make a mistake. See, you have become sexualized. Because at one time, women did not, women did not trip off my orgasm. I gotta do this. Because that's not you. You don't care nothing about that. You are interested. Your pleasure, because you know that life brings you eternal life. You have a connection to the womb. A man does not have a connection to the womb. So he don't care about nothing. You always hear stories of women willing to risk their lives real quick to save their babies. Women don't mind taking custody of their children because women are the nurturers and the, and can bring life into existence. You don't see men fighting for their babies. I, I just want my babies. I got to have my I gotta have my children. You don't see that. You don't see men rushing, 
trying to fight and defend their babies, especially in the black community, because if they did, we would be in much better shape. But you'll find black men at the dope house and the liquor store with their sagging jeans and drunk. They don't care nothing about life. That's why it's easy for you to see men in bad shape like that because they are lifeless. But in religion, you have a person called Jesus that come among those who are dead and raise them to life. Woo! If you only could understand what that meant because Jesus is here. But Jesus is not one man. Jesus is a people that have been given certain information to raise not only themselves, but the masses of humanity, bring them from a dead state, a filthy state, bring them to life. It's not going to be easy because it says in your revelation that this war of Armageddon, a great fight, have to occur in order to bring the people back to this God. It also says that only 144,000 will be saved. So I'm not shocked that many of you will reject my message and disagree with what I'm talking about. Because many will go down in hell with the devil. But see, you're already living in hell. The purpose now is to go high. That's why we all that's why we want to get to heaven because heaven represents a higher place. Hell represents a lower place. You can't mess with me because I'm in a higher place. I'm beyond the flame, I'm beyond the fire. That's why you can't touch this. No matter how hard you try, no matter how smart you think you are, no matter how fly, and you really can't do nothing with me with all that urine and feces dripping out of your mouth. Sex is a beautiful thing, brothers and sisters, but I tell you this also, whether you married or not married, when you begin to obsess with sex, it clouds your mind. It clouds thinking. Because that's not what you're about. You're more than a penis. You're more than a vagina. Religion is trying to teach you that you are gods. That you are a child of God. Do you think God is somewhere thinking about who he's going to bang? Or if God is a woman, who she going to bang tomorrow? It's, that's not what it's about. Sex is just a tool used for reproduction. And then you must nurture that life that you produce so that you can have eternal life if there is such thing. But the bottom line, and see, I want to go ahead and bring our little talk to Conclusion, all of these people, they have two more excuses for their nasty, vile behaviors, copying the racist European Caucasian. That might be part of their culture, but that is not you. Well, Africans do it. And I'm very sure that some Africans have practiced this. But at the same time, do you know if they have been conquered by white people somewhere. A lot of Africans are doing things that is unnatural. And you don't know that the white man was there and conquered them. And left them with these behaviors. At the same time. Now listen. At the same time. Just because Africans did this and Africans did that. Don't mean everything they done was right. That's why you live in a new period of time because now we've come to the point where we know some things better than them. 
and we make a mistake trying to be like them. Some of them no longer exist. These Africans, these Egyptians, these people that y'all talk about and y'all praise. And the reason why you praise them because you don't know them. Because if you really knew them, you probably wouldn't like them. That's why it's good just to be who you are. A descendant of slaves born in America. What is wrong with that? You don't have no pride in yourself. You want to know about Egyptian history and Moorish history and you don't even know black American history. Because if you really knew black American history and our struggle right here upon this wicked land, then you would be so proud of yourself. And once you break these final bonds of mental slavery, you will be able to outdo. You will be able to create a civilization greater than Egypt, greater than the Moors. A civilization that encompasses all of the human family. And in time, and this is the bad news most other races don't like to hear, but in time, it all goes back to the black. But before they leave, they will be those these people under your leadership, under your guidance, will experience the heaven talked about in Quran and the Bible. But all Africans did not do everything right. They had error also. You will copy Africans. There are some Africans that believe in human sacrifice to their gods. You will murder somebody and sacrifice them to God. Some Africans drink blood. Some Africans are cannibals. They eat other black folks. <laughs> Some of y'all do that in different ways. That's what this discussion is about. <laughs> Some Africans believe if you have sex with an infant, it can cure AIDS. There are all kinds of beliefs and customs and things that ancient blacks and some of these Africans right now that they practice that ain't right. That's why it takes a new knowledge, new understanding to break all this ignorance. It's time that it all is exposed and it comes to and it goes as part of the past and bring this is something that is new. But it ain't for everybody because some of y'all just nasty and filthy and vile. Your mind is corrupt. You've been living in the pig pen for so long you become a swine yourself. And then why are you so upset? With me talking about how nasty and yucky and disgusting that you are. If you're so proud. Because deep down inside. You know that's nasty. No matter how you talk about it. No matter how you try to clean it up. You can't make urine clean. You can't make feces clean. You can't make a butt. An anus clean. That's where your that's where your body eliminates filth. Your waste products. And you licking and lapping and in, with a smile on your face. But at the same time, this is the ironic thing about it. At the same time, if somebody offered you some water and they got it out of a toilet, you'd be like, oh, that's nasty. You just had your a penis in your mouth. You just had your tongue in a vagina or an or a anus. So how is drinking water out of, out of a toilet nasty? Well, that's, that's where you've been in something that's worse because that toilet is cleaner than where you just been. And I also like to say this. While they bragging about their, their freakishness, their sexual perversion, being a pervert, abnormal, They talk about how good being in filth is. But they don't want to tell you about the downside. Y'all know what I'm saying? The downside? The penis was not meant to be sucked on. So now you have a rise 
in what they call erectile dysfunction because the penis was not meant to be pulled and sucked on the way the things that y'all do. And also, there's a rise in prostate cancer because the prostate is overworked because y'all can't stop. So that prostate gland in the male becomes injured. And once it becomes injured, it opens the prostate and makes it vulnerable to, to disease. You don't know that. You think there's a consequence. There's a consequence from playing in filth. Why do you think you have to take a bath? Why do you think you have to be clean? Because if you're not, you don't take a bath, you don't try to be clean, then you open up your body to viruses, cancers, to sickness. And what y'all doing is sickness. The vagina was not meant to be sucked and licked and all that stuff that y'all do. And y'all take these plastic parts and y'all, you, you turn things up and you don't even know what you're doing. The vagina is supposed to have a certain amount of wetness. It's supposed to be self-cleansing, but you licking and lapping, you licking all the, all the, 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 uh, fluids that the vagina makes in order to clean itself. And you drinking it like it's some, like it's Kool-Aid. Oh, uh, woo, woo, y'all make me, oh, y'all make me shiver. And y'all lick the anus. And you put penis in the anus and all kinds of plastic pieces in the anus. But anybody in, in the health, matter of fact, anybody who is part of the of, of, of healthcare, all the things I'm telling y'all, they will tell you that it is true. It's not popular. That's why they're not going to tell you because they want you playing around in filth. They want you stupid. But a good doctor or even a good nurse, they go, they'll tell you. You can't keep messing with the anus like that. The anus was not meant. The anus is not a vagina. It was not meant to open up and do the thing that y'all trying to make it to do. So pretty soon, those the muscles of the anus begin to get weak. And the muscles of the anus get so weak that some of y'all can't even hold your feces no, no more. You have to start wearing diapers. If you notice, the rise in diapers for, for grown people is rising. That's telling you something. Women are having more woman problems. That's telling you something. Men are having more men sexually related problems. That's telling you something because you are a freak. And in the end, you're going to pay to be a freak. So if that's how you want to go out, you having fun and seeking pleasure, then you do that. But you have been warned. And when you're sitting in a chair and I'm looking at you and I can see that the imprint of that diaper, the only thing I can tell you is I'm not going to tell you nothing. But in the back of your mind, it's going to look like I'm saying, I told you so, but you didn't want to listen. But that's how we are. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that black people, it's easy for them to go in the wrong direction. Hard as hell to get them to go in the right direction. That's how we are. Because we are so loyal to, this, to these racist Caucasian people and we love them because they give us nothing. Because they don't give a dang about us. This is a way of life. We believe everything they teach us. Even some of y'all so-called black power folks. You believe as long as you can do your filth. You said, well, this is what they taught in anthropology. anthropology. This is what they said. This is what the white man said. But see, I tell you this. And I'm going to go out on this note. There is something called common sense. If it don't make sense, and see, if you don't try to research and think on your own, 
You can't determine whether, whether something makes sense or don't make sense. You just go with the flow. And right now, that flow has taught you to be yucky. Taught you to be so nasty. But at the same time, how can you call yourself a god and a goddess? A child of God licking a vagina, sucking on a penis in your mouth. And y'all Christians and Muslims, and y'all doing that same type of nasty stuff. That's sodomy. Some of you don't even know what sodomy is, but that's what it is. There is only one sex, brothers and sisters. Sex produces life. If it does not produce life, then it is not sex. It is hiding behind sex. It is freakishness. And the reason why I have taken the time to talk to us and the fictional Jesus and the fictional Muhammad or all our great leaders and teachers, many of us have come before us is to bring life and bring to us life abundantly. You want to have sex. Have sex. And learn what love is. How you going to have sex. That's why you can't. You really don't feel nothing. Because you, you don't have no love. Who loves the black man and woman? You've never been loved before. Oh that's. What you talk about is old fashioned. It's old fashioned, but your marriage is, you can't make a marriage that lasts, can't hardly make it two years. But your grandparents, who's old fashioned, 30, 35 years, they've been married. You can't keep a boyfriend, you can't keep a girlfriend, jumping from one person to another, but you live in new fashion. So maybe you need to take another look at old fashioned. Maybe there was something there that can show you how to live better. But you so, you have been, you've been programmed, you have been, you become a sexual deviant. They keep booty in your face and penis in your face and booty in your face all the time. And you can't break the grip of the devil. And Satan, even in church, you can't wait to get down. And that's where you're going to always stay. Stay down. So we need somebody or somebodies to bring us a message to raise these who are and have become dead, lost, deaf, dumb, and blind, raise them from a dead state to life. And if you begin to break and stop believing in all this trash that we have been taught by the Europeans, then you begin to begin then you begin to be able to converge and understand your true nature. And your true nature is much higher than putting a penis in your mouth and licking a vagina like it's a lollipop. That is so nasty, y'all. Woo! How can you be so proud? And really, you're not proud. You've just been tricked and you've been deceived. Think about it. Think for yourself. Rationalize. Use common sense. Look at it. You, you and I, we're not nasty like this. That's their life. They forced us into this. You are beyond African. You are beyond black. You and I are the children of the universe. Babies, the progeny of what they say or what they call the most high. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Rao. And this was and is Think for Yourself. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth.